Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, uh, welcome back. Uh, as we discussed, uh, we will talk about uh, governing equations. And these governing equations will essentially describe, are basically used for describing the entire flow field for any combustion process. Okay. So, as we will see that, or as you can anticipate that these governing equations comes from basically conservation principles, conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, conservation of uh, scalars, uh, conservation of energy. Okay. So, uh, basically all these conservation principles uh, and how generation of uh, something leads to the depletion of that one or generation and depletion of these quantities and how that affects the can couple with the, um, uh, uh, with the flow field uh, etcetera that we will see. Basically, you will see that uh, that uh, this conservation of mass is essentially uh, uh, is a coupling between uh, is we will see that it is basically involves density and velocity. The conservation of momentum once again involves uh, uh, density, velocity and pressure okay, because essentially the pressure gradients is, uh, is, uh, is the characteristic force here and that will uh, uh, cause acceleration or deceleration uh, in a flow and uh, as, as well as uh, this. Uh, uh, the frictional loss due to the presence of viscosity. Uh, then we will see that how species uh, can be advected, how particular species can be advected along with the flow and how it can diffuse uh, from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration and how also it can be, dip, uh, this can, it can be generated or depleted uh, because of the source terms which comes from the chemical reaction rates. And uh, the, uh, the conservation of uh, this energy uh, that is the which we will start with the uh, internal energy form and then we will go into the enthalpy form and then we can show that we can arrive at a temperature form and we will also see that how this enthalpy can be transported with the flow and then it can be also can be there can be pressure that can affect the enthalpy the time time variation of pressure and then also there can be like uh, conduction processes heat conduction processes as well as uh, enthalpy transport due to the different uh, diffusion velocities and also how uh, enthalpy, uh, how the enthalpy of formation essentially gets converted into sensible enthalpy through the heat release uh, term inside the energy equation. So, these governing equations are very, very pivotal, are central uh, to your uh, uh, understanding of uh, the flow processes inside a combustor because it is using these governing equations we actually plug in our understanding of kinetics, our understanding of transport, our understanding of convection, uh, all these things uh, come uh, into are uh, basically assembled uh, uh, using this uh, governing equations. So, with this governing equations of course, uh, in a discretized when you do a discretization and then in a grid uh, you can actually solve uh, using CFD computational fluid dynamic techniques to solve the flow inside actual mm, uh, combustor also. So, uh, uh, either you are doing theory or you are doing experiments or you are doing uh, CFD, mm, uh, you must uh, know the governing equations and understand what each term represents. Okay. So, first uh, we will do this uh, with the do we will do, do this control volume derivations and then we will also for different uh, things like uh, uh, mass, momentum and energy we will go to this conserved uh, scalar formulation and then these two things this reaction sheet formulation and the simplified one dimensional uh, numbers will go into in a, in a later stage when we will go into the when we will go into look into the actual flames. So, as we said uh, that chemically reacting flows. Okay. Now, combustion is of course, uh, a very solid example of a chemically reacting flow. So, chemically reacting flows are governed by conservation laws for mass, momentum, energy and concentration of individual species. All right. So, uh, the conservation laws are derived keeping in mind the continuum hypothesis. Of course, you know about the continuum that is the that is uh, when you look into a small uh, part inside the flow you still find density to be uh, uniform 
uh, inside a very small um, part of the flow and it, it does not happen uh, does not show discrete jumps due to uh, due to uh, uh, presence of one molecule and then nothing and then one molecule so it is nothing like that so the continuum hypothesis is uh, is, uh, is uh, certainly preserved in these cases mm, all right so one can uh, uh, define density as a continuous variable uh, which is uh, mass per unit volume and then the governing equations model the multi component reacting flow with a set of partial differential equations. So, we will start with integral equations and then we will move on to partial differential equations and along with the governing partial differential equation the constitutive and auxiliary relations are required to form a set of closed equations. So, the conservation laws that we will use that this does not close the problem this will only give rise to this partial differential equations, but to close this partial equa differential equations we will need this constitutive and auxiliary relations. And of course, as you will see that uh, these equations will be very complex in their com full forms and uh, will appropriately simplify them under suitable assumptions all right. So, the central theorem that we use for understanding the conservation laws in fluids is the Reynolds transport theorem ok. Now, this Reynolds transport theorem is very very central because it allows us to use our knowledge of conservation laws for a system to a control volume. That is to give you an example suppose this is my control volume this is my this red boundary is my control surface and then there is a packet of fluid which is this this is a system which is moving. So, say this packet of fluid uh, was at this position at time t minus delta t uh, this occupies inside of the control volume at t and then this packet moves out at time t plus delta t. Now, what I want to say is that the law that you know the laws of physics say like the Newton's law or the mass conservation that you know is for this packet ok a fluid which is moving the mass of it is not changing the momentum of this if there is no external force it is not changing uh, and this energy if there is no external in supply of energy or loss of energy that is also not changing. But that is not what we are interested ok. We are interested in applying this law inside a control volume why because your energy is suppose your engine your engine is actually a control volume right. So, you are not interested in the mass of packet of mass that goes in at different state and this that goes out. We are interested in what happens inside this control volume. So, first we need to understand the law that will translate the conservation laws from the system to the control volume. So, what does it say? It says that uh, of course, we can go this in details, but uh, this is not a fluid mechanics class or a thermodynamics class. So, we will just uh, leave it leave it here itself. It says that the time rate of change of an extensive property psi ok. Please note that this is the time rate of change of the extensive property psi ok which is uh, within a system is essentially equal to the time rate of change of psi within the control volume and the flow rate of psi across the control surface. So, of course, when you are moving a packet of this fluid there is no inlet or outlet, but in this control volume that you have defined ok in this thing there is continuous inlet and this is continuous outlet. So, it says that it is the time rate of change of psi that is happening inside this control uh, inside this control volume and that amount of psi that comes in and that amount of psi that has gone out the difference between them. So, that also you need to take care of ok. So, that is the basic essence of Reynolds transport theorem. And uh, here we use this um, extensive fluid property xi capital xi is nothing but capital xi is equal to integral small xi dv that is so this uh, this xi is equal to integral v xi small xi dv where v is the volume of the control volume in this when it is capital V in this manner ok. But you have to be careful sometimes we will use v as velocity also. So, please be careful with that. So, this J says that this d xi the dt that is the total derivative of this property xi following it to following it in a, in a system sense is essentially is equal to dou xi dou t integral over xi dv that is integral over the control volume plus the integral over the surface xi times v time v vector dot nds 
v vector dot n cap d s whereas n is the essentially the surface normal. So, this part this v vector dot n d s basically characterizes the mass flow rate that is happening and also this multiplying with xi gives us the flow rate of the property xi that is happening all right. Uh, if this is a moving control volume then this essentially becomes v relative. The, so, uh, that is the velocity actual velocity minus the velocity of the control volume. So, this is the Reynolds transport theorem and then using this which is defined over the entire, sur entire surface you can this convert this surface integral into a volume integral using Gauss divergence theorem. So, which is given this. So, once you have converted it you see that mm, uh, that basically this is also an in a volume integral this is also a volume integral. So, we can uh, write that uh, using this you can write that d j i d t is equal to integral v times dou xi dou t plus divergence of uh, xi v vector integrated over the entire control volume. Okay. So, this is the basic formula for going from a system representation to a control volume representation. This is for a system that is a rate of change of property xi for when you are following that packet when you are following that system. Okay. Um, by system we mean that there which does not through which there is no mass flow rate that is happening. So, when you are following the packet of fluid the rate of change of that of xi on that packet is given by this, but when that packet enters passes through a control volume this is given by uh, uh, this volume integral. Okay. So, uh, this is how you basically uh, connect. Uh, so, essentially this this is the rate of change of xi of the of the the connection happens that this is the rate of change of xi happening inside that packet of fluid when it is residing inside the control volume and that must be equal to the in the rate of change of the of the of, of the property xi when it is within uh, within the control volume plus the flow rate of xi that is happening across the control surface okay so this is uh, uh, how you uh, uh, connect and so, integral of v's is nothing but this uh, dou xi dou t uh, plus divergence of rho uh, divergence of xi times v vector dv. So, now this xi is essentially a generalized uh, uh, property, but uh, we can uh, use this uh, for any property and we will use this to basically uh, derive the uh, basically change the representation of the xi. Sometimes we will consider xi as mass, sometimes we will consider xi as momentum, sometimes we will consider xi as, uh, as, uh, uh, as a mass of certain species certain kind and then sometimes we will consider xi as the total energy and by changing this representation of xi as we see did before also. Uh, for the for deriving the transport properties, we will uh, arrive at the conservation laws of essentially mass, uh, momentum, species and energy. So, now first uh, we need to understand that uh, this uh, we need to understand the concepts of the definitions of the velocities, uh, because here uh, as you know combustion the difference between combustion and other uh, and fluid mechanics, because here we not only involve reactions, but we also involve multiple species it is not one kind of a fluid. So, so V i is the velocity of the i th species okay. uh, the small V i and this average this small v is the mass weighted bulk fluid velocity. So, this is this v is essentially the velocity that we are familiar with right. So, this is the mass weighted bulk fluid velocity with which the entire fluid is moving. V i is the velocity of the average of the of the ith species with is the velocity with which the ith species is moving ok. So, summation rho i v i is equal to rho v. So, rho i v i is nothing but the rho i is nothing but the partial density ok um, and uh, we will see that how rho i is defined is nothing but y i that is the mass fraction is essentially rho i divided by the rho divided by rho. Partial density means the mass of the species i divided by the total volume whereas the density is the mass of the full thing of the entire uh, all the components uh, divided by total volume right. Whereas, this v i is the molecular diffusion velocity which is nothing but capital which is this represented by capital V i is nothing but this velocity of the ith species minus the bulk velocity mass uh, weighted bulk velocity. Okay. So, consequently it can be shown that uh, summation rho i capital V i is equal to essentially rho i V i uh, summation rho i V i minus rho V. Okay. Uh, why this is so? Because uh, if you consider uh, um, uh, if you consider this thing summation i rho i V i vector is equal to uh, if you start with um, let us start with v i vector is equal to um, v i vector minus 
v vector. So, let us multiply both sides with rho i, rho i, rho i and then you sum over it, uh, sum it, sum it. Okay. So, then what we will get is that the summation rho i v i vector is equal to this stays as is summation rho i v i vector minus when you this this does not contain i. So, you only sum over rho, rho i summation rho i is nothing but rho. So, this is equal to rho v, but as we have seen here that summation rho i v i is equal to rho v. So, these two are essentially equal and this becomes equal to 0. All right. So, uh, also this uh, v i uh, is uh, so using that using this formula and this formula we can find out the actual uh, v velocity is essentially nothing but summation rho i y i v i y i is the mass fraction. Okay. And also we can show that using this th because this is equal to 0 you just divide both sides by rho and you get uh, both sides by dividing by rho you get y i and you get summation y i v i is nothing but equal to 0. So, these are some of the important uh, definitions of uh, uh, velocities that uh, we will use. Okay. Now, please understand the difference between uh, these velocity, these three velocities. This is the velocity of the ith species. Okay. This is the mass weighted bulk fluid velocity and this v i is the molecular diffusion velocity which is nothing but the difference between the velocity of the ith species and the bulk fluid velocity. Okay. So, that is the molecular diffusion velocity and none of these will be actually equal to 0 in a given uh, scenario. In a, in, a, in a particular case inside of say a flame or something like that. Now, uh, how do you uh, now uh, also if you remember uh, now we, you consider that we derived this formula that is uh, d xi rate of change of this property xi capital xi in the system which is inside just inside the cons control volume is given by v do xi do t right plus divergence of xi v vector this v is a bulk fluid velocity dv this v is volume okay so this is what we have got okay now, um, uh, so the rate of uh, from Reynolds transport, Reynolds transport theorem, we can say that the rate of change of mass just by by changing with the, from the property xi to property mass. So if you now write that this xi is uh, this xi, we say that this was equal to xi dv. So we can write m. We can basically change the representation of xi to mass. We can say m is equal to essentially rho dv, and then we can write the Reynolds transport theorem for this full thing. And that we will see if uh, as nothing but uh, so instead of capital chi we have replaced with m, we um, replace capital chi with m, and we see that this is nothing but integral of volume t partial d rho partial dt plus divergence of rho v or integral over dv. So, now we know that total mass is conserved when there is chemical reactions. So, of course, this dm dt there cannot be no rate of change of mass possible and then this thing is possible uh, this thing is equal to 0 and then this becomes equal to 0. So, that is what you get. So, if the integral and this be because this dv is essentially arbitrary. So, we can remove the integral like integral psi, we can remove this dv and remove this integral sign. So, what we will get is nothing but this this inside this um, d partial d rho partial dt uh, plus divergence of rho v is equal to 0. All right. So, just to uh, recap what we did uh, because this is so important that is how we can understand the other things. So, uh, uh, we just uh, I will just repeat again. So, we just applied the Reynolds transport theorem d xi dt um, is equal to uh, uh, is equal to integral v del xi dt plus divergence of uh, xi v vector times dv. Okay. And now, if we write that xi is equal to m, then it means that this implies that xi is small xi is nothing but rho because the capital xi is equal to integral. Uh, was equal to integral xi dv. So, uh, by uh, obviously, mm, we then small xi is equal to rho and then we can say that do m do
And if we and this since this is arbitrary, we can remove the integral sign and we can convert this integral equation to this differential partial differential equation, which is nothing but do partial d rho partial d t plus divergence of rho v vector and that must be equal to 0, because there is no rate of change of uh, no mass uh, change is possible. So, this is our continuity equation. Okay. So, uh, similarly we can uh, we can apply the Reynolds transport theorem to devise uh, to, to derive the species transport equation, momentum equation and um, um, and uh, 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 and energy conservation equation. So, uh, these uh, all this we will uh, just uh, derive right now. So, similarly just we derived right uh, m i we just we wrote that xi i is equal to uh, m i we can write xi is capital xi is equal to m i and then it means that a small xi is nothing but rho i that is a partial density of the species i and then we can write d m i d t is equal to integral d v integral over v partial d rho i partial d t plus divergence of rho v rho i uh, total bulk velocity times d v. Now, please note that this is a bulk velocity, but now interestingly this is not for the total mass. So, of course, the total mass is conserved, but in this case there can be sources and sinks of d m i d t that is the uh, mass of a particular uh, species uh, need not the rate of change of the mass of a particular species inside a combustion environment of course, will may not be 0. Suppose, this m i is i is represented by the by methane uh, fuel right. So, of course, um, before and after combustion uh, or, or in a, as the flow is happening if you have a uh, suppose there is a flow uh, and there is a flame right this is the flame you have and suppose uh, uh, m i or, or rho i will be large here if say i is equal to some mass of say like uh, m of uh, C H 4 will be very large here, but that will be equal to 0. There will be no mass of C H 4 here, right. So, of course, there will be we need to find out some sources and sinks and those sources and sinks uh, basically is one is a volumetric uh, which uh, comes from reaction that is uh, this is given by this rho i d v this this is equal to given by this w i d v w i is nothing but the reaction rate uh, that we have learnt, but it is in a it is it is a different units we will come to that. Um, it is actually in units of uh, 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 in, uh, in units of mass. Um, uh, um, uh, so, uh, this is different this is slightly just very slightly different from the reaction rate that we have seen. Uh, whereas, this uh, surface uh, we will also see that uh, Mm, uh, that there can be also surface fluxes, especially from the diffusion flux V i and that can be uh, given by the diffusion velocity capital V i and that will be given by this uh, uh, integral over the surface with a minus sign and given by rho i times V i vector dot n uh, d s vector. V i vector is the species diffusion velocity okay. and now this since this V i vector dot n vector is essentially 0 which are uh, uh, which it represents loss and hence we have the negative sign because that con uh, contributes to the uh, to make it as a uh, source term and that uh, the to represent that the flux is coming inside from outside. Okay. So, uh, as a result the is this will be as uh, so, so the what we can write is that. So, this is the equation, but this is not equal to 0, but instead it is uh, this equation is nothing but um, minus integral of rho i v i vector dot n vector times d s plus integral w i d v. Of course, you can now convert this d s this control uh, integral over the surface to a control volume uh, okay. and this is now the, then it is now balanced. So, what I want to say is that the rate of change of m i inside the system uh, which is resident inside this control volume. So, as a result this rate of change of this m i inside the control volume uh, is given by this uh, this uh, two things um, that is uh, number one there is a there can be a species flux uh, which is uh, tra which is uh, which is the flux of species carried by this molecular diffusion velocity and also it can change due to the uh, reaction rate that is happening inside which is volumetric in nature happening inside the control volume so these two contributors will now balance the uh, this uh, rate of change of the 
uh, of the uh, mass of the species i inside the control volume and when you is apply the Gauss's divergence the theorem onto this and uh, 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 convert this to a volume integral it uh, you can basically transport it into this direction in, into the left hand side and as a result you can write the simplified equation which is partial d rho i partial dt plus divergence of rho i times uh, the um, this is the bulk velocity. and this is the diffusion velocity. All right. So, and uh, this is essentially is equal to the and this is of course, after you have removed the integral and just gone into the partial for differential equation form and this is given by the, the reaction rate w i and um, which is in a uh, this is of course, in a in a in a mass uh, form. So, this uh, w i is also in a the mass form um, units of mass essentially not in units of mass, but units of mass per um, um, uh, grams per, uh, per, per cubic meter second that is the typically the unit of this one. Um, okay. And this can be of course, true for any species wise. So, thus uh, what we see is that essentially this is our uh, uh, species balance equation. Okay. Uh, it looks simplified, um, but actually it is not because we have not specified anything about this um, species diffusion velocity and uh, we will need um, this uh, some constitutive relations for this uh, rho v i to be uh, to be supplemented to to close this equation because we have not specified anything about this and of course we will use our knowledge of chemical kinetics that we have studied uh, in um, uh, in over over in sufficient details to use this to model uh, to to basically uh, to uh, uh, to describe this uh, this uh, uh, term which is the basically the rate at which uh, the species i changes because of the chemical reactions okay so this is the source term in the species equation now we can also use the conservation of momentum now it said j uh, is equal to we write is equal to the momentum okay which is uh, m times uh, velocity so this m, m is essentially m times v okay and now then becomes then the partial then small j which is the uh, this is was the extensive property this is the intensive property uh, uh, this is essentially a specific property then uh, small j essentially becomes equal to rho times velocity and then the rate of change of momentum inside this is essentially integral of uh, we just replace uh, this thing into the uh, we just replace the small j in this and we get that is essentially partial d rho d rho v dt plus divergence of rho v v vector v vector over this. Now, of course, uh, there can be forces uh, acting on this uh, mm, uh, control volume and uh, there can be surface uh, forces in terms of like stress and pressure and uh, this, this capital P is essentially a, a, a full uh, surface force tensor and it will contain all sorts of force from pressure to different viscous stresses etcetera. And there can also be a volumetric source like a body force F i though this will not be of, uh, of our interest in mainly in this course um, which comes from this F i, but we will keep in, in this one for generality. This will be of course, very important because as we will see later the all this, uh, this will contain both a pressure component as well as the viscous uh, um, uh, components and the, uh, the this uh, this more viscosity will actually come into this. Uh, so, uh, this is the form that uh, uh, once we remove the convert this uh, this uh, volume with, with this integral form to a partial uh, differential equation form um, what we get is nothing but this uh, partial d rho uh, dt uh, which is the transient term then we get this um, uh, advective term. Uh, both are actually you know both are nothing but this uh, in this form is nothing but the acceleration of the fluid and this acceleration is caused by this surface uh, uh, by the gradient of the uh, of this pressure tensor which is nothing but the force okay and this force can also be exerted by a volumetric source in form of a body force and this is uh, in another form this we have to get the total uh, dv dt which is the total acceleration is given by the um, uh, minus gradient of uh, p pressure tensor uh, which is nothing but the total force and plus the body force Okay, and we will later break this up into the actual pressure and the viscous forces and uh, we will eventually neglect this. Finally, the conservation of energy. Now, this is the most uh, actually this is the most complex equation and this is also the most important uh, when it comes to, to combustion because uh, in combustion temperature is the king. 
right and uh, essentially we will see later that from this energy we will derive a useful form for temperature. So, uh, this transport of temperature or this transport of uh, thermal energy uh, will be coming from this conservation equation. So, for now we start with uh, with a very modestly we write this this extensive property that is uh, capital Xi is the total energy which is the total internal energy and then the corresponding uh, specific property small j becomes uh, density times the specific internal energy plus the this is a kinetic energy component rho v square by E. So, this is the internal energy and this is the kinetic energy component ok. So, once again proceeding similarly we can actually uh, um, uh, by Reynolds transport theorem the uh, the rate of change of this um, uh, total internal energy total internal energy inside the system which is resident inside the control volume is equal to the rate of change of uh, this internal energy inside the control volume and that happens due to the rate of change of that property inside the control vol volume plus the fluxes of uh, this property that is coming through the control surfaces. Uh, so, this is the control uh, rate of change of the property inside the control volume this is the flux of that of the of the internal energy plus the kinetic energy that is coming from the surfaces uh, surface uh, integral converted into volume integral using the uh, using the gauss divergence theorem and uh, so this is the left hand side this is how the rate of change but that is uh, we also need sources and sinks because there will definitely be sources and sinks because um, there can be an energy flux q vector okay there can be a heat flux vector and uh, that will ac actually in the volumetric form appear though it is uh, actually in the surface form in this, in this form q vector dot it is a heat we can consider this as essentially a heat flux vector heat flux vector dot a normal vector in the uh, uh, surface uh, surface uh, surface integral which becomes essentially equal to the divergence of heat flux vector in the volume integral and then there can also be surface stresses which is if you remember flow work that is the work done by pushing um, work done by due to pushing the fluid uh, because of the by the external uh, press, uh, surface uh, forces like pressure. So, uh, to account for that uh, we need to that will come into this and this is that form and also there can be volumetric sources or by uh, by or, or body forces which can also come in uh, which can do some work and uh, by, by by the body forces and this is also come that this will typically once again will not be um, uh, will not be important uh, in this thing and will not consider this much. Mm, but all this the, these these things these things will be very very important and will form an integral form integral uh, part of our integral meaning very important part of our analysis here. So, uh, if you write this thing down this the total thing this this is the essentially the though it is the RHS here it actually when you write down the governing equation this forms the LHS ok. And this plus this forms the RHS right hand side this forms the left hand side this forms the right hand side. So, if you collect this and if you collect this what you get is this is your uh, transient term d rho times uh, internal energy specific internal energy plus uh, uh, kinetic energy by v square by 2 partial dt partial dt plus this uh, advective term uh, this uh, divergence of rho velocity vector times uh, specific internal energy plus v square by 2. Uh, this is can be totally written in a uh, in a this uh, totally material derivative format that is uh, rho times uh, total derivatives of E plus V square by 2 divided by dt. Then that is equal to the, the sources and sinks this is the surface flux of heat that can come in and that is given by divergence of Q vector heat flux vector and then there can be this uh, flow work which is basically the work done by the um, external or uh, surface forces by pushing the fluid in. And then there can be this uh, force due to the then this can be the work uh, by the body forces uh, as we said that this will not be of importance and we will not consider this because we will not really consider body forces we will not even consider gravity in this uh, mostly in this thing. So, though gravity can be important because of the buoyancy effects, but um, especially when you talk about fires, um, but uh, in terms of the, this combustion course we will not consider also much uh, gravity 
and uh, uh, acceleration due to gravity will not consider and uh, will not consider any body forces as such. Though they can be important in certain circumstances like electromagnetic ionic winds etc. If you do plasma assisted combustion these sort of uh, forces might become important. Uh, but um, for this uh, for this course we will not consider this will our equations will essentially be restricted to this part only okay so now if we summarize so using starting from a very generalized reynolds transport theorem for our any property capital ri and uh, we started with the um, notion that capital Xi is essentially an extensive property of a system and uh, which the system is essentially coincident inside a control volume um, and then uh, we can write our laws uh, for that system and then we can write our laws for the control volume and it is a Reynolds transport theorem that, equ that, that equates these two laws uh, by considering the by additionally considering uh, in addition to considering what happens the rate of change of the control volume we are we additionally consider what comes in and what goes out of the control volume the flux of those properties and then uh, uh, this this flux of this properties actually come in surface form and then we converted this uh, surface actually as uh, surface integrals then we converted the surface integrals into into um, uh, volume integrals using gauss's divergence theorem and then we applied this for a generalized uh, volume and uh, we applied this for mass, we applied this for species, we applied this for momentum. For mass there is no uh, balance extra source sink required because the mass is essentially equal to the rate of change of mass inside the uh, system uh, coincident with the control volume and the rate of change of uh, the mass in the control volume plus the mass flux coming in and the mass flux going out that is equal to 0. So, we do not need additional source sinks terms, but uh, when it comes to like things like uh, species Okay. When it comes to things like species we need additional uh, sources and uh, uh, sinks uh, there can be sources of sinks in terms of this reaction which can uh, generate or deplete a particular species and also there can be species flux coming in uh, mm, crossing the control surface and uh, we need to account for that. Momentum also the rate of change of momentum is given by this rho dv dt um, and then that can be changed by surface forces through pressure and the gra or rather the gradient of pressure and also by body forces once again this is not important we will not consider this we will not consider this and also in terms of energy uh, we will see that um, the rate to total uh, internal energy specific internal energy that will be changed here we actually can uh, do some uh, uh, take the dot product of this momentum equation and subtract with this um, uh, this equation and we can arrive at a uh, energy equation for purely for specific internal energy and that is what we have done here and we will see that we arrive at this form divergence of this heat flux vector times p uh, uh, tensor contracted uh, uh, twice with uh, uh, divergence of V mm, uh, and this um, uh, and then we can neglect this uh, this um, uh, body force term. Uh, so, this is what we have uh, done. So, uh, now uh, we have this uh, complete conservation equations ready. All right, we have conservation equations for continuity, we have conservation equation of species, uh, we have conservation equation of species, we have conservation equation of momentum, we have conservation of energy. That is all the conservation equations we need, but then these equations are not complete we, and this forms we do, it will not be able to solve them. Why? Because you see that there are very interesting things which we do not know, we do not know about how this V i will look like. Uh, we have equations for V, we have equation for the for the bulk velocity, but we do not have an equation for V i which is the species diffusion velocity. Uh, similarly, we do not have any constitutive relation for pressure, okay. we need to supply that, we know what can be that can be the, so this you can think that this V i can be supplied this by fixed diffusion law, this pressure this can be come from this uh, equation of state and uh, this heat flux vector this divergence of Q that can have many things like it can have uh, heat conduction, Fourier's law of heat conduction, it can have uh, like uh, your radiation source and it can have also heat flux uh, due to uh, heat different heat contents of different species we will see that alright. And also very very importantly uh, what we need is that we need to close this uh, we need a constitutive relation for this omega uh, this uh, wi but of course we know wi we can use this uh, law of mass action that we have learned uh, in the previous classes and also we can use this um, uh, this uh, the k that comes in front of this uh, products of species raised to the stoichiometric exponents and then uh, uh, 
uh, we can um, use them uh, to basically uh, come at a reaction rate for uh, WI. So, uh, we will come at this, uh, we will come to this. Uh, so, this conservation equations are to be supplemented by specification of the diffusion velocity capital VI, the pressure tensor capital P and the heat flux vector uh, Q and of course, the reaction rate WI. And we will supplement these things, uh, we will come at this, uh, this uh, um, specific uh, uh, um, closures uh, or this, um, uh, this uh, um, auxiliary equations or this uh, constitutive relations for these quantities in next class. So, thank you very much.